first heard about Johnny Todd in March of 1974, so I was not given his name at the time. I was talking to Jack Chick, the author of the comic book publications like Broken Cross, the Crusader series, and some of the little pamphlets like Big Daddy and G.I. Joe and This Was Your Life, and The Thing, uh, a number of very effective comic uh, book type gospel tracts. Uh, which have reached a circulation, I believe, of more than three million copies. And uh, God has wonderful blessed Jack Chick's ministry. Jack Chick called me in March of 1974 about a certain subject and mentioned the fact that he had just met a converted Druid priest who was saved out of Druidism, which is a very high level of witchcraft. And he told me that this particular converted priest knew personally of more than 50 to 60 cases of human sacrifice perpetrated in this country. Now, at that time... Johnny Todd's name was not given to me. Then about the last of May or first of June of this year, uh, just about uh, five or six months ago, about five months ago, Jack Chick called me again, not remembering who I was because we had not met personally, and began to tell me about this man named Johnny Todd who was converted out of witchcraft. And then I reminded him of the conversation we had uh, about uh, three and a half years before in March of 1974, and I asked if Johnny Todd were the same man he referred to as a converted Druid priest in 1974. He said, yes, Johnny Todd is the man. Well, I've had uh, several occasions to talk with Johnny Todd, and I know that Johnny Todd knows what he's talking about when he talks about witchcraft and uh, other occult organizations. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ saved Johnny Todd out of witchcraft five years ago, and uh, I have personally talked with Johnny Todd on the basis of Jack Chick's recommendation. Uh, having known Johnny Todd now for more than four years, and my having known him for some six months, I believe that Johnny Todd is a genuinely converted man, saved by the grace of God out of the depths of Satanism. And uh, without taking any more of his time, Johnny, you have until five minutes till ten. And uh, is your wife one of those good ones? Keep five. I have, I have fifteen after now. Okay, God bless you, John, Johnny Todd. Thank you. Before I start today, I'd like to leave a text with everybody. I try to leave it across the country. When I was saved, I knew absolutely nothing about the Bible except some basic teaching that I had picked up by accident when I was about 10 years old in a Nazarene church when the people that I was being raised by that were in witchcraft found out that I had went to this church. They, as they say, blew their stack. And that was that for going and hearing anything about the Word of God. So everything I know about the Bible, I've learned in the last five years. I had some very, very good teachers in San Antonio, a man named Jack Taylor, a Southern Baptist pastor. And when I told him, it was like two days after I was saved, uh, the things that I had come out of and was afraid of and so on, he gave me this scripture as kind of my battle cry text, whatever, throughout the walk in the ministry that I would have later. And I've left it with Christians because in a day and age when we see so much happening around us, we lose sight of who's behind what is happening around us. We lose sight that if it is good and positive, it's the Lord, and if it's evil and rebellious, it's the devil. A lot of times we look at our teenage children and we think that they're the devil, and the teenage children look at the parents and think they're the devil. And we lose sight of really who our enemy is in this warfare that we're in. So I'd like to leave this with you. I'm sure many of you know it. And if you don't, I recommend that you mark it in your Bible and learn it by heart. Ephesians 6.12 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I didn't bring my Amplified with me today. I was a little rushed as I was late. But uh, the Amplified gives a much clearer description of it. So many times we see political corruption and things going on, and these are a few things that I'm going to discuss today, but we lose sight of who's behind that political corruption. We looked at Nixon's era, we look at some of the things that Jimmy Carter's doing today, and we know they're not Christian deeds, we know that they have nothing to do with the Lord, but we kind of scratch them off to the man. We should scratch them off to the enemy, and the man is not the enemy. I came out of a family that uh, was, you know, many of you, how many of you were raised Baptist? We'll start that way. All your life, that's what you were raised from the time you were a little child of Baptist. How many of you were raised in a Christian home? 
Okay? Okay, now, so in the Pentecostal churches, uh, which I <laughs> try to avoid as much as possible, uh, they have a term called homegrown Pentecostal. I guess homegrown Baptist would be just as fashionable. Well, I was a homegrown witch. From the time that I was five years old, I knew nothing but witchcraft. I would have known it sooner, but they didn't discuss it with me. They take you very, very young. And from the, even before they start talking about the so-called positive aspects of witchcraft, they talk about the negative aspects of Christianity. So that I'm a, being a Christian is a miracle, not because I want it out of witchcraft, but that I would consider Christianity to be the only way out. Because they brainwash you from very early childhood that the Christian is the most evil being or creature in the universe. That he wants nothing more than to take the everyday witch out and shoot them, burn them, hang them, whatever he can do. And that they are the most hateful beings that ever existed on the same level as maybe Adolf Hitler. So this is what I was raised up to believe. And uh, my last name is Todd, but that was just changed about 60 years ago. Until then, our name was Collins. And the Collins family, my direct tree, was responsible, according to witchcraft history and a few history books that I can find also, was bringing witchcraft to the United States. So uh, when I was 14, and some of you might consider that a very early age, but it wasn't, it was kind of a late age for this, I was initiated into organized witchcraft. In other words, I was made what Brother Rasmussen is. I was made a pastor, a minister. I was ordained. In fact, a few years later, when I went to enlist in the service, I didn't have to go because I was draft exempt because I was the ordained minister of a legal recognized church. So, um... Uh, 4D status for a few people who know what that is. I'm sure Brother Rasmus and uh, ordained ministers are exempt. And uh, I enlisted and went through the service until uh, I got into a little shooting incident in uh, uh, Germany after I'd come back from Vietnam. I'd re-enlisted and went to Germany. And uh, I was getting ready to be court-martialed. In fact, I had everything down pat. I was as good as gone... Uh, we had entered a plea of guilty yeah, for a uh, deal of 35 years and then parole, and they wouldn't even consider it. An officer had been killed in the situation, and I was more or less just waiting to be transferred to Leavenworth to serve the time when uh, you know, Witchcraft Church, which I thought was just a little group of people that I belonged to, sent a political member of that church, a state senator, two of them, state senator, uh, a U.S. Senator and a representative over to Germany and they took hold of the situation and 24 hours later I was a civilian in the United States with all my time, rank, and an honorable discharge and my court martial records didn't exist anymore. And all of a sudden I realized I wasn't in something that just lit candles and incense and said magic words once in a while and stuck pins in dolls. There was a little more to it than just a religion. And uh, I left New Jersey and went home to Columbus and I asked my real mother, I have two mothers, I have a foster mother and a real mother, I asked my real mother what I was to do and she said, here's an envelope of $2,000 and a one-way ticket to New York City, you get there on the next plane and I'll tell them you're coming. She didn't tell me who she was going to tell it was coming or anything, but I flew to New York City and I spent six months learning all new witchcraft. Till then I had been taught what most of the teenagers learn. And I want to tell the teenagers something here real quick. I'm sure most of you probably go to the school here, but if you were in a regular school, you would meet witches running all over the place. We hear this across the country. Almost every high school has it, especially in California. And they tell the young people lies. They tell them it's DSP. They tell them it's psychic power. They tell them it's spirits of the dead. They tell them everything but what it is. And I was supposed to be a high priest leading a church of, uh, that had 13 ministers to it plus a couple hundred people in his congregation. And I believe this. And then all of a sudden for six months, this man, Dr. Buckland, unraveled everything and told me there was a one God where before we believed there was four. There was one, and his name was Lucifer. And he was very quickly to tell me that wasn't Satan. He didn't want me to get any ideas that Christians could be telling me the truth. I should have thought then that if he had lied, they had lied to me for almost... Uh, 18 years, they were probably lying to me now. And But I went ahead and believed it, and for six months I took lessons in witchcraft that I didn't even know that things could happen that had happened. And then I was transferred to Los Angeles, good old L.A., can't seem to get away from it. 
And for six months, my foster mother taught me something that your pastor is very familiar with, the political situation of the occult. And all of a sudden, I realized that witchcraft wasn't just spell casting, it had a purpose in mind. And that's when I started getting a little afraid because when I was 10, as I said, I learned a little about the Bible. It just happened to be all revelations that I learned. And all of a sudden, we were discussing a world ruler that would be personally guided by Lucifer that could gain control of the world supernaturally and take control of people's minds. Of course, they didn't say there was a defense against this. The way they spoke, everybody was affected. They didn't say anything about the blood of Jesus. But uh, we sat there, and for six months I learned the political structure and the history of witchcraft. And then I was taken to Colorado, and I was placed through an initiation into the sixth realm. And this initiation consisted of a blood sacrifice. And from then on I was given a territory of 13 states. This didn't happen to be one of them. This belonged to my foster mother. But I was in charge of all the occult, political, and drug activity in 13 states. And this is where I was in 1972 when I met the Lord. Well, I, at first, for many years, said by accident, but I've come to realize there's no such thing as an accident when it comes to Jesus. He had everything perfectly planned out. But it was a combination of a personal witness to a coffee house, a Jack Chick Publications track, and the movie The Cross and the Switchblade. And a lot of things that... Uh, uh, for instance, one Baptist church praying and fasting that I would get saved. They figured if I got saved, maybe the rest of the witches would follow in suit. It didn't exactly happen that way, but uh, it did put a dent in the situation. So that's uh, quickly, very quickly, my testimony. What I want to do today is, for the young people and the adults here, I'd like to throw this thing open to question and answer. Because some of you may have run across situations, some of you may have questions on how to deal with people that are in this, I want to leave one word with you. The only answer to witchcraft, the only way that anybody's ever succeeded in getting out has been through the blood of Christ. Everybody else who has ever tried to get out of witchcraft, and I want to leave this with you, witchcraft is real and supernatural. I remember the minister who witnessed to me said that until he found his daughter in it, he was always, and he was a Baptist pastor, was always raised to believe that witches were fables that flew around on broomsticks on Halloween night. And all of a sudden he woke up and found it was very real. And if you want to find out the power behind it and how it can be defeated, I suggest the 16th chapter of Acts. Paul handled it very nicely. And it's one thing that I can testify to all the teenagers considering the lies that you're born with witchcraft, which is the lie that they give you. When I was saved, and the pastors there at the Baptist church called the demons that were inside me out. I lost all that power of witchcraft. I've never regretted it. If the power came from demons, I don't need the demons. So before you teenagers start fooling around with the astrology charts and the Ouija board, check out the 18th chapter of Deuteronomy and find out you'll pick up a demon from doing it. And you pick up one, you keep on going. My foster mother wrote a book and she said, doing one spell or practicing one seance in witchcraft is like jumping off of a tall milk, uh, mountain or a skyscraper. There's no turning back. It is the strongest addiction that I know. Dave Wilkerson said that he has seen people go through withdrawal from drugs many times, but seeing one witch go through withdrawal from the occult shattered his mind. And I've helped thousands of people through withdrawal from witchcraft and withdrawal from drugs. And once you've seen the withdrawal that a person goes through from being in witchcraft, you'll think that drugs is something you practice in kindergarten. It's that violent and that destructive without Christ especially. And what I started to say was, nobody has ever succeeded in getting away because they simply will kill you with a spell. Now, Brother Rasmussen knows from testimony from other people who have been around. They haven't been able to do this to me or anybody else that has ever gotten out. A few people had been killed physically that have gotten out that were Christians that got out of witchcraft. But, and they've tried this with me and my wife and so on, but they've never succeeded and we're still very, very much alive. But uh, we have to depend wholly upon Jesus to stay in that situation. Now, before any of the young people decide that witchcraft is a groovy thing, they will tell you you can get out anytime you want. But once you're in, there's a bounty on your head should you ever leave. And I don't care if you're 13 or 14 years old, the bounty starts at $10,000 and they send a professional. They don't send an everyday person. If you're wondering why I'm still alive, it isn't easy. 
I've got the bullet holes in the buildings and the bombed out buildings and everything else. The, the record, and I stand that Jesus kept us alive in every situation. You don't walk into a building as it blows up in your face and walk back out without a scratch on you unless the Lord is there to protect you. And this occult is very dangerous. Chick Publications did the Broken Cross, which will be on sale back here today. The only track that I know of that has saved people out of witchcraft. And they did this book, and because of it, they moved to another building with bulletproof glass and bombproof walls. That's the situation. The artist draws his stories at home now in a dwelling that they don't know where he is rather than try and drive to work and be in danger. And uh, Jack, uh, his staff is always on him to be more careful because they're trying to drive him off the road and stuff. We try to get him to drive a Cadillac that might stand up a little, but he says the Lord can protect him in his Toyota as well as a Cadillac, so he keeps on driving the Toyota. But that's the situation. It is no joke. It is a serious situation. The occult gives up less people to conversion than any other thing. And it's not because they don't want out. They desperately want out. We went to Minneapolis to where they had a convention. We took 10,000 of the Broken Cross there to distribute free, and they were so afraid of this book coming, they canceled the convention. Rather than let it fall in the hands of the people who would be coming from across Europe and across the United States to attend. But people came into our meetings there that came anyway, and they listened, and when they were done, they asked my wife and myself and other ministers, if you can put us in a safe place of protection, we'll come out. They want out. They know that Christianity is the only way, but they're physically afraid to come out. You think the mafia has fear for those that have been watching The Godfather or something? It has no fear compared to the occult people coming after you. But uh, we are believing that we will have this situation. Brother Rasmussen will be one of the few people in the United States who will know how to get converts to the refuge that we're preparing. So they're, we're preparing a place not for them to go permanently and hide, but for them to grow in the word and in physical strength so they can go out on their own a live. And Jack Chick will be putting uh, in the back of all his publications on the occult the phone numbers of the different things, and you'll be one of the phone numbers that people can reach and say, we have a convert that's been one out of the occult. How do we get him to this refuge place? And he will be one of the few people in the United States that will know where this place is in the mountains. It will be that well guarded. So uh, we just ask your prayers and your questions now if you've got some. Yeah. Well, 12 years old girls are a big, more or less. Uh, they've been known to get down to 10, but they usually start at 12 or 13 and go to 25. And they, for the people who like to hitchhike, this is how they pick them all up. And, of course, the police will just tell the parents the kids run away from school. They use them for sexual and for sacrifice, human sacrifice purposes. For those that are wondering if that is an accident, you're in L.A. County here, right? The L.A. County Sheriff's Department has a very secret undercover thing. I don't even know if you can find out if it exists, but I talked to them. It's called the Occult Squad. They told me in 73 that they found 35 bodies of girls in Los Angeles County that year, and I talked to them in December, that they knew to be human sacrifice, which they listed as rape cases to keep it from the public. The statistics that came in so far this year are close to 125, and the year's not even over. Now that's girls that have been used for human sacrifice. And if you all notice, there's quite a few rape cases that happened around Halloween that are in the news right now. And from what we can find out, the circumstances that each death fits human sacrifice. But you'll never hear it, that that's the reason. We turned in four different people that were responsible in the area that I knew about to the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, and they arrested all four. They got convictions, and in every conviction, they listed it as rape killing, and they knew better. Yes. Yes, it is. It's listed in the 18th chapter of Deuteronomy as con uh, converting with necromancy or familiar spirits, it, uh, clairvoyancy, anything that is psychic is a counterfeit of God's power by the devil. And it was, okay, the woman who was giving fortunes in the 16th chapter of Acts, that was clairvoyancy. When Paul cast the demon out, she couldn't tell fortunes anymore. That settles it right there. Yeah. Superstition is a Christian form of witchcraft. Okay. 
Okay, she asked me if superstition was a form of witchcraft. It's a Christian form of witchcraft. Uh, one thing I want to throw at the young people real quick. If, in the occult stores, they don't sell Ouija boards, in most of them, in the serious ones. They call it a Christian instrument. They say Christians are the only ones stupid enough to use it. Witches know that the devil runs it. They know more than some of the Christians. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want an answer on that? <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you asked me about that. Yes, I do. Physical evidence. One, take the exorcism first. The rite that the Catholic Church uses for exorcism, they have changed a few words, just, I think, about six words, is the witchcraft rite of exorcism. It is 8,000 years old. The Catholic Church is not that old. Okay? Next. On the apparitions, it's the same thing as the Spiritualist Church of America or any of the witchcraft organizations. It's called Auras. And if you'll notice, none of them are pure white. Now, coming out of the occult, I know the system of collars. And the principality, uh, there's seven of them. And all the demons under them go by the collar of their leader, their general. And the occult demon, Rija, appears as a blue snake or a blue mist. I've heard thousands of reports, including Jean Dixon, that her report, that her guides, her spirit guides, familiar spirits, are blue in nature when they communicate with her. And of course, the red is lust and so on. It's a long list. But the saints or aspirations, I want to get into this thing real quick. The Catholic Church's altar, except for the Atame or the Knight, is the exact altar of witchcraft. And according to the reports I can get on the Nicene Council, most of the ministers at the Nicene Council that set that heresy up were from the Temple of Diana, which is witchcraft. So everything, the bell, the incense, the whole ritual, their holy water is a salt water mixture. This comes from witchcraft, which they do exorcism with. Everything that they do comes out of witchcraft, and they can't get around it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Did everybody hear that question? Okay. He wants me to explain the Council of Thirteen. I'll explain what that is. You're probably wondering. And uh, what their purpose or thrust is. Okay. All right. If you'll all just give you a second. Reach in your billfold. You can put it in the offering plate later. Reach in your billfold and take out a $1 bill real quick. We'll settle the whole thing. I'll let, let you ask your federal government later how this got on the $1 bill. Okay, on the back of the one dollar bill, you'll see the crest with the pyramid in it. Now, Dr. Rasmussen has upstairs the whole crest. You only have the words left out of it on the block. But there are sections. His is a little behind time. There's a few new organizations. His dates back to the 1800s. But that pyramid in the Illuminati consists of three pyramids and a sphinx. But their crest is this crest. The Illuminati is the occult organization that we belong to. It means the light bearers. The witch is called Mariah, the conquering wind. But it's the capstone above. The eye is Lucifer. The triangle of the capstone is the tribunal of the Rothschild family, which is called the Holy Family. They lead the Illuminati. They are would be Paul, Peter, for the Catholics, all the saints, and Mary and everybody rolled into one, and the Pope. They are the voice. The doctrine of the occult teaches that Lucifer comes and sits at their dining room table. When they see the table, they leave 13 chairs out, and the 13th one is for Lucifer to set in himself. They set him a plate and everything. Now, I've been there in the mansion, and I've seen this go on. And they, in turn, direct to the top block of that pyramid. And that top block is the Council of 13 of the Grand Druid Council, which I was a member of. Now, the Druid system of government is not that the politicians run everything. It is the same system that Rome had. The priests let whoever wants to rule the government, but the priest must rule the ruler. Now, I'll let that sink on you for a while. 
and I want to throw this in, will cause a lot of controversy, I'm sure, but it's a fact. Since the time of World War Wilson, including him, there has never been a president of the United States that was not an Illuminati, that did not belong. Now, that'll shatter a few people's ideas about a Christian president right now, but it's a fact anyway. And the Grand Druids, although they are just every, supposedly everyday people like me, you look at me now, I'm, I'm this way, I was a different way when I was in witchcraft. And part of my authority was whatever governors, senators, or political people were in my area took direct political orders from me, which I in turn did not think of, but simply translated to them from the orders that we got from London, from the Rothschild family. Now that's the Council of 13. The thrust is that when I left in 72, they had a chart that said in eight years, eight years, they would have the whole world. And from remembering that chart, I haven't seen one thing through the news media not happen on schedule according to that chart. I would say that that's about right. I would say the word today would be Maranatha, that he's coming real quick, because theirs is coming real quick. They have it. It's not that far away. Okay. Yeah. It'd be easier to give you the name if you want. About 99%. Okay. The man who pulled me out of jail became an attorney general under Ford. It was William Saxby. Well, that gives you two names to start with. The best way is to find out who belongs to the CFR or who belongs to the CFR. Yeah. Not the way it's been written. Uh, it's a little ridiculous. I know I'm going to step on a few people's toes who have read about the Illuminati, but uh, he asked me what part Zionism played in the Illuminati. Rothschild and a few people in the Illuminati were born Jews, but they're not Jews. You can get in the Word of God and find it. I'll that a little bit. The system is this. With the same books that proclaim that the Illuminati is a Jewish organization, also proclaim that the Illuminati is a Luciferian organization. You can't have both. A true Jew believes in Yahweh. A Illuminati person, and I'm not a Jew, and I was a leader of the Illuminati, believes in Lucifer, the God of light, peace, love, blah, 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 and so on. It has nothing to do with the same, because there might be a few Jews born, and they might have some ties with Zionism, bloodline, but the organization itself has nothing to do with Jewism at all. It is totally 100% Druid occult, and that's its purpose. In fact, the reason that the Rothschilds even still reside in London is because England is considered to the witches the same as Palestine is considered to us. It is the Holy Land. You take pilgrimages there. You stop off and kiss the stones on the Rothschild mansion for luck, and so on and so forth. If by some chance you happen to meet a Rothschild and he gives you a blessed sign or a blessed bee, then your whole life is set. It's that type of nature. But it has nothing to do. There is an interesting thing, though, I'd like to throw in. A lot of witches do wear the thing called the Star of David. David was long dead before that star was ever drawn. His son drew it. And it's called the hexagram, and the word to curse or the hex comes from the hexagram. And when witches practice magic, they draw a five-pointed star to stand in, and they call demons up in the evil sign, what we call the Star of David. So before Christians start tying it around their neck, that's called the demon star, or the death star. And that's why it was drawn. For a few people that might be confused about the Solomon aspect, when he backslid, he became the most holiest person in the occult. Everything that we practice are based upon books that he wrote and pictures that he drew when he backslid. Well, including that exorcism right you asked about, he wrote it. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll give you an Okay, she asked if they're behind witchcraft programs that are coming on. I'm going to give you two quick examples. For one, I... We're telling this across the country, the most disastrous film that has ever come out, pro-witchcraft, 
thousands of people that are Christians are going to go watch and are watching. I was told by a bunch of Christian people across the United States and every city I went to, you got to go see this movie. There's no sex. There's no violence. There's, you know, it's, it's just an old kind of, um, how would you put it? Um, I can't think of the guy in the 30s that was a sequence in outer space movies, Flash Gordon type picture. So I went and watched it. It used words and beliefs that are the innermost beliefs in witchcraft. They're not even the ones spoken of in the open. And witches don't call it witchcraft. They call it the Force. It's called Star Wars. And the whole thing is centered around two-thirds of the movie is based on the Force. That you're stronger when you die, you're reincarnated, you receive guides from people who are dead. It's ESP. That you, that it's, see, the biggest line about witchcraft is that it's not bad. It's neither good nor bad. It's the person that's good or bad. And this movie emphasized that a lot. That witchcraft was okay as long as you were a good person. So, adults, before you let them go. And the other one I want to hit real quick is how many remember Bewitched? It's probably one of the main reasons that witchcraft grew it in Dark Shadows. They were, Bewitched was written by a witch. The belief of witchcraft is you're born a witch and that the mortals or everyday people who don't practice are dummy. You remember that in the thing? Well, they never got into, it was more of a comedy, they never got into witches' ceremonies or Sabbaths or anything like that. Last night a person asked me to watch who had gotten to read the script of the new one, Tabitha. So I watched it. It had witchcraft all through it, real witchcraft. Ceremonies, Halloween, everything. They're coming out stronger now. You better watch what your kids turn on the TV set. There hasn't been a witchcraft movie that had anything to do with Satan in the last five years that Satan didn't win openly in the picture. Tabitha, bewitched. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. I've got reports on it. I was in witchcraft back then. I know what was going on. Yeah. Uh, wasn't there a woman who had a lot to do with the show by the name of Louise Hubner? That's my foster mother. Yeah. What now? Usually through the... See, the Illuminati name's not used much anymore, except by everyday people who find out about it. Witches don't use it. The organization doesn't use it. And each country has its... Uh, the Mariah is the occult part, and the political part has a name in each country. And the United States is called the Council of Foreign Relations. That's mainly how they got into it. They mainly got into it because you can't become a president. You may think you elect a president, but I'm here to tell you, you elect whoever they put up. And when I was saved in 72, I got on a television broadcast that went throughout southern Texas, New Mexico, and so on, and it, they still got the tape down. It was on a talk show called The Seven Club in the morning, and I had a minister from the church there with me, Ed Human, and they asked me the political aspect that would be happening. Now, this was the election of Nixon and McGovern at the time, and I said a few things I don't want to really get into right now because we don't have the time, but one of the things I said was that the last election that would happen, the president, the next one that was coming up, the one that just happened. The president that would be elected would be the last president elected in the United States. That doesn't mean it will be the last election, it just means he'll be the last president. And that when he was elected, he was so important to be elected that the person who would run against him would also be Illuminati. That they wouldn't allow anybody else to get the nomination from the other party. And that he would purposely do everything during his campaign, the other party, in this case Ford, to throw that election. And if you'll look back on it, I think you'll see things that he did that proved that lost many, many votes. And Benny almost won anyway. I think it would have been disastrous if he had won to them, not to us. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, yeah. We have talked with Reagan's son and other people, and they have told us of violent threats, bribes, 
death threats, assassination attempts, and everything that never reached the news media that went on during the uh, nomination thing for the Republican Party. Yes. It ain't easy. I've got a first grader that uh, went to school, and every day she came home, she said, Daddy, here it is, throw it in the trash can during the Halloween season. The goblins, the ghosts, the witches, the stuff they cut out. She understood. She says, oh, well, Thanksgiving and Christmas is coming up. She understood. Halloween had absolutely nothing to do with Christianity. Christians shouldn't even touch it with a ten-foot pole. It comes from the word shaman, uh, which means the day the dead come back and talk. It was invented by witches, capitalized on by the Catholics, but nothing in it has to do with Christians. Nothing. Who wants to celebrate a day that witches sacrificed thousands of people throughout the world on? Yes. White magic and black magic is a Catholic term. When they were burning people at the stake for being witches, they wanted to protect themselves that practiced it. So they invented the term white witchcraft or white magic and black magic. Witches, in their books, will tell you that it doesn't exist, as it was mentioned in Star Wars. And yet, when they're trying to convert a Christian, they will say they're white witch and not a black witch. And yet they'll tell you in their books it doesn't exist, which means they'll say anything to convert you. But uh, there is no such thing. The devil is evil, and you can't whitewash him or anything he does. You can call it ESP, but it's still witchcraft. Yeah. Hypnosis is of the devil. Plain and simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Charismatic realm. Theirs is feeling and not word. I go into charismatic churches and speak, I know. And I want to tell you something there. They can't understand why they have no young people. They can't understand why the young people are practicing witchcraft. It's because they've never been taught the word. They've been trying to give a form of discipline without love, strong discipline, no love to go with it, and no word, just emotion. And then they wonder why somebody is saved three months and then in the world three months later. A good example of this is Melody Land. It's got to probably be one of the worst churches in Calvary Chapel in the United States. Because it gives absolutely, they have a whole Bible college. They teach nothing but emotion and theory. They don't teach the word. Well, as long as you, well, one thing real quick here. Satanists believe in Satan. Witches do not, and there is a difference. Witches are taught that Satan and hell is a lie. I was saved for hours before I ever knew there was a devil. I concentrate on the scripture. I concentrate on the 16th chapter of Acts and... Rome, I mean, the Ephesians 6, 12, the 18th chapter of Deuteronomy. Please don't quote, oh, uh, we suffer a witch to die. Please don't quote that to them. They scare them to death. But uh, work on the love and work on the scripture, but leave the devil and hell out of it if they're a witch. How much? The, certain groups use it. Other groups don't touch it. Okay? In fact, it's capital punishment to touch it. The death sentence. But uh, some use it, but they twist it. They Johnny, take it out of context. Time. Stay here just a moment, Johnny. Uh, <clears throat> during the preaching service, which will start in about five minutes, I'm going to be preaching a message on the real cure for witchcraft and all bondage. And uh, we invite you to stay for that. Then at 11.15, uh, Johnny Todd will speak again in this building, and we'll have him continue from where he has uh, left off so that he will not be repeating himself if you can ask more questions so if you'll just stay through the preaching service at uh, 11 15 the second uh, Sunday school session will start and uh, Johnny Todd will continue from uh, the point of having left off but first I'd like to ask just a couple of questions Johnny uh, a few years ago I became interested in the subject of Freemasonry and I'm wondering is the witchcraft initiation anything like the uh, Masonic initiations First level witchcraft and first level masonry initiation is identical. The only difference is that my wrist was cut and I signed a blood pack and that I was nude and they are clothed. That's the only difference. The words, the acts, 
the tying, the blindfold, the charge, everything, even the pledge of secrecy is exactly the same. There's no difference. And the sixth level initiation of witchcraft blood sacrifice is the same initiation to the highest level of masonry, the 35th. It's called the right of the warrior on the block. 35th degree. The 35th degree, which most of our politicians are 35th degree masons. Yeah. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's no such thing as a warlock. If you're witnessing to a witch, please, unless it's a Satanist, please call him a wizard or a witch if you've got to call him anything except idiot. Uh, well, that's true. I was an idiot. I mean, anybody that's in it is. But uh, go ahead, finish your question. They don't believe in hell. They believe they, when they die, they will come back in another life. Okay? In other words, it's deception. All right. Remember again, Johnny Todd will speak here again at 11.15. So... After a year's worth of training, initiated to the sixth level or grand druid position of witchcraft, I sat on a council of 13 people that take orders only from the Rothschild Tribunal in London, which they claim they take their orders directly from Lucifer.